As a devoted fan of Game of Thrones, when I heard that the Center for Art in Wood was having a show of something called Mangle Boards, I shuddered to think what the victims of these torture devices were forced to endure. Then I met a man who spent six years researching them for his amazing 2015 book, Mangle Boards of Northern Europe. So, this is the curator. What's your name, sir? Jay Raymond. So, how about my theory? All of your reactions, thinking and responses to objects should be rooted in the object, not in your imagination as to what the object is. A mangle board is a plank of wood that was used for smoothing linen, a sheet, for instance, and these were popular beginning in the mid-1500s and then fell out of fashion by the mid-1800s when mass-produced heated clothes iron could do a better job. Most of the objects in this show are historical mangle boards, but the center also asked a group of very serious contemporary artists to respond to the motif. There's a tap dancer behind you. <laughs> Once in love with Amy. Sorry, it's been a long time. <laughs> I'm Amy Forsyth. I have a background in architecture. I've done a lot of things here at the Center for Art and Wood, including a residency last summer. This particular piece is a feminist interpretation of Mangleboard, but a friendly sort of cooperative <laughs> gesture between the male and the female. I was thinking about this young man giving this young woman something that he made for domestic chores. It's like, here baby, I made you a blender <laughs> and um, you, you get to use it making me stuff for the rest of our lives. So I came at it from that direction at the beginning and I was also reeling from the election and some feminist issues. I started out feeling really aggressive about this piece. If you look at the drawing, you'll see that originally I had a very mechanistic approach, thinking of the handle as being this phallic gesture. I was going to bind fabric into the book, and I couldn't quite figure out what the fabric should be. I was thinking I would embroider all the rude things men had ever said to me. And I thought, you know, I don't really want to spend my time thinking about that. Amy came to see her piece as more about a good relationship, two equal partners serving each other. Her piece became a book, male and female sections tied together by plant forms. Although I've sewn my whole life, I haven't done art with fabric. I've been really interested in the idea of starting to bring fabric and wood together. This piece gave me the opportunity to do that. Mangle boards first appeared in what is now the Netherlands in the mid 1500s. We find them in Denmark, around the same time and pretty much around Scandinavia, certainly by the early 1600s. give it to the betrothed and then she'd have to use it for the rest of her life. Is there truth to that? There might be some truth in it, but the actual truth I think is much more complex. I found one book that studied original sources in the role of mango boards in courtship and betrothal in Sweden. The book made it clear that the customs varied widely by geography and by financial means. The more wealth the people had, the more gifts they gave, and the more elaborate the mango board and the other gifts might have been, and it's more likely with someone of wealth that they would have had somebody make the mango board instead of making themselves. It's kind of obvious from looking at the mango boards that many of them were made by practiced hands, not by the man himself. The timing of the gift could vary, again, by geography or by financial means. It might have been one of many gifts, it might have been the only gift, but it certainly seems that by the time that gift was given, it was understood that marriage was in the works. 
I brought in a heavily wrinkled shirt, but you dashed my hopes that it could be mangled flat. How does the mangle board work? Typically, it would have been a piece of flat work, meaning a sheet or a tablecloth, not a shirt or a pair of pants. It would have been washed and dried and folded into a long, narrow strip and then tightly wrapped around a wooden rolling pin. The rolling pin would have been set on a table, and then the mangle board would have been rested upon that rolled up fabric, and then the person would have grabbed the mangle board with both hands and rocked it back and forth from side to side. And when the outer layer was smoothed, then they would unroll it partially and smooth the next layer in. As we all know, linen wrinkles very easily. I'm wearing a linen shirt today. Presumably, the mangle board must have worked quite well at removing those wrinkles because it was a technology that hung around for 300 years. I understand you had some training at the Barnes Foundation, is that correct? Yes, I was a student at the Barnes Foundation in the 1970s. One of my teachers was Violet Demasia, who co-authored the books with Albert Barnes and was the principal teacher for several generations. For one year, I was a teacher there. I taught the class that she taught. Everything I learned there is how I think about and relate to art. It has shaped my mind in terms of my relationship to the visual world. What's a general principle of the Barnes way of looking at aesthetics? One of the basic principles is that the object speaks for itself. So at the Barnes Foundation, you study the objects. You don't study the history of the artist or their times. You look at the object and you try to learn the language that the object is speaking in. Paintings, for instance, speak in the language of color. In photography, the principle means is light. So you have to learn the language of the medium that's being used, and you do that by studying as widely and as deeply everything that's been produced in that medium. So if you want to understand paintings, you study paintings. If you want to understand photography, then you study photographs. What are some of the design features of a good mango board? Well, the attractive thing about mango boards is their carving. The side that would do the smoothing was on the bottom and was left smooth, but the top that would face the user was decoratively carved and sometimes painted. Most of them had handles, some of them didn't. The handles tend to be animal forms, is that correct? They're often animal forms, but they're often abstract, no apparent representation. Suomi is Finland. That word is the Danish word for Denmark. Um, that's the Icelandic word for Iceland and so forth. Uh, the Netherlands, Sweden, Norway, Germany. Which is your favorite country? Well, it's hard to say that I have a favorite. I've become very, very fond of the mango boards of all these seven countries. Somewhat partial to the boards of the Netherlands because I think I've come to understand them in a particular way that I didn't come to understand other countries, but I love the primitiveness of the Finnish boards and the sculptural qualities of the Icelandic boards. So maybe those three countries would be my most preferred of the seven. The Swedish ones, the writing, it almost seems like it could have been done by some graffiti artist in New York City. Yes. Yeah, they do have to the modern eye sort of, of graffiti quality. And of course, we don't really know how things came to look that way. I've seen many boards from Sweden where there's many dates on them and read some things that suggested the dates were just important events like marriages or births or deaths or things like that. So, you know, people own these for generations. So over a hundred years or more, more than one person might have inscribed something on the mango board. What do you think these old craftsmen would have thought of the modern artists doing their versions of mango boards? I think they would have been amused by the fact that somebody was making a mango board just for appearance's sake. Although I do think there was some tradition of doing that among perhaps people with more wealth. The mango board was just a decorative object or a show piece. It probably saw little use. There might be a tradition of making mango boards just for appearance's sake, and so I think they would have understood that. <laughs> the problem with modern people thinking about people who are long dead is that I think the idea of art has changed so drastically that we don't really have any concept of what they 
thought about art if they thought about it at all. They just made things and made them look appealing. My guess is they never saw themselves as artists or thought that they were making art. They were just expressing themselves and making something practical and, and making it visually appealing. What do you think about these modern mangle boards? I'm enjoying them. The artists have taken an idea and made it personal, and of course that's what art is. The idea of art is not to repeat what's done before, but to do something that hasn't been done before and put part of yourself in it. So I think clearly that's happened. I did not realize that Beth Ireland's piece has a sprinkler, which is traditional that you sprinkle the fabric as you iron it. So it's a built-in sprinkler for the ironing board. <laughs> huh. Pussy grabs back. What do you think that means? Oh, I think we can all figure out what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is Hilary Pfeiffer. She's a maker. I think she lives out in Oregon. Her stuff's always like this. It's got this kind of playful color going on, but underneath it, there's more. A little kick. Yeah, she nailed this one. <laughs> Ashley Eric's Moen, she and I were residents here together last summer. We had a really great time. She's done a lot of work, really amazing stuff with found object parts. So these are actually old chair parts that she used. And I think the piece itself is also reclaimed wood. She lives in Australia. She runs a program over there in Canberra. And she also has a Norwegian background and was familiar with these mangle boards. She used the laser cutter. I think what she's trying to do is set up a biblical era from the beginning to the end, and she's somewhere here in the middle. That's actually her, Ashley Eric's Moen, uh, daughter. Hi, I'm Michael Scarborough. I'm an artist from New York City. The original Michael boards had handles that were shaped like horses, but as mine is Buddhist oriented, I didn't really want to use a horse, so I thought, what sort of animal would be Buddhist? And of course, I came up with elephants. I liked one elephant so much I decided to give him an entire family. Whereas the original Mangle boards would have Christian iconography, I again, since I work primarily in the Japanese aesthetic, decided to make my Mangle board look as if it might have been in Kyoto in the 1600s. And that's why we have four Buddhist deities on it. Had you ever heard of Mangle Boards before this show? I cannot say that I had. I know from the time when I was singing opera working in Germany that the term Mangel, which we get Mangle from, is still the term used for ironing. So if you take your suit to the cleaners, they say, would you like to have your suit mangled? And that took a little getting used to, but no, I had never heard of Mangle Boards. But now that I see them, they make a lot of sense. How did you first get interested in such a arcane subject? It was completely accidental, as a lot of life is. I had written a book on streamlined electric irons of the 1930s and 40s for a collector. During that year that I wrote that book for that gentleman, I came to understand that he also would like to have a book written about manga boards, something he also collected. So I proposed that I be the author of that book and that I do an aesthetic survey. He agreed, and so we proceeded. It's the Carsons who commissioned the book. Buck Carson is a collector of a variety of things, including irons and mango boards. Marty is an avid gardener. I met them through the American Club for Iron Collectors, of which I'm also a member. So I knew them socially for many years, and then our relationship developed into my producing these books in their behalf. All but two of the boards in this exhibit come from their collection. I selected the boards for this exhibit. This is not their entire collection. Which do you prefer, electric irons or mangle boards? My heart has been in electric irons much longer than they've been in mangle boards. <laughs> but as the years go by, I feel closer and closer to the mangle boards especially in this exhibition, because the way the exhibit has been designed, 
I think their impact is enhanced. Might I suggest that you are the world's leading authority on mango boards? Uh, I believe that I am the world's leading <laughs> authority on mango boards. I know there are some people in Europe who know more about German mango boards, and there might be people who know more about the mango boards of a particular country. But as far as the bigger picture, the mango boards of these seven European countries, I don't think there's anyone who's ever studied them like I have and, and thought about them and written about them in the way that I have. So you're Mr. All-Round Mango Board? Yeah, well, of these seven countries. I mean, because there are mango boards made in at least seven other countries that weren't part of our survey. Thank you very much. What's your next book? I don't know what my next book is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet it'll be a good one. Uh, thanks, John. I appreciate that. And I very much appreciate learning about these marvelous objects, which are not at all torture devices. Though it would not be surprising to me if an angry 16th century wife or two used their mangle boards to put a loutish husband in his place.